Oh yeah, baby. I'm taking y'all back to the Hubix pie days in New Orleans with these fried apple hand pies. It's really easier than you think. It takes a little bit of effort, but I promise you, once you take your first bite, you'll appreciate the effort. First thing you want to do is you want to go ahead on and peel your apples. I like to play the game of can I get this peel off in one swipe? Normally I lose the battle, but I actually won today. Use whatever apple you love. Then core that apple. The easiest way to core it is by slicing around the core, okay? No need for those fancy chef gadgets, okay? Once you do that, then you want to slice down your apple into about a quarter inch thick. And then you're going to turn it on its side and then do the exact same thing. Think about going for like matchstick size. It's all a little bit bigger, okay? So you can get these nice small chopped pieces of apples because you want them to fit inside of your hand pies. After you finish getting your chef skills on with your knife skills so strong, you're going to melt some butter in a skillet. Once the butter is nice and melted, you're gonna add the apples to it and you're gonna cook these for five minutes. It's very, very important to pre-cook your apples because this is how we're gonna incorporate so much flavor into these hand pies, okay? So after your apples cook, you're gonna notice a whole bunch of steams coming out. Don't worry, just give it a stir every now and then. But while your apples are cooking, you gotta make your sugar blend. So we're gonna use some sugar, some cornstarch, and then we're gonna add some apple spice and some salt. Then we're gonna stir them up together to make sure everything is nice and blended. And then we're gonna add that sugar blend to our apples, okay? By the time you're finished measuring and getting all that, your apples, your five minutes should be up on cooking your apples. Then also add a little bit of water because we're gonna kind of create like a little, a little caramel, give or take, you know, that's kind of what we're going for, but not being a caramel, but some of that texture, all right? So after it cooks down for a few minutes, as you constantly stir it, you'll notice that most of the liquid has evaporated and you're feeling this thick. Push that to the side and let it cool while we make our dough. So we're gonna add some salt to our self-rising flour and some shortening. You could use butter, but my grandma ain't use no butter, so we not using butter, all right? We're gonna use some shortening, okay? So then you're gonna just crumble the shortening into your flour until it resembles coarse cornmeal. Then you're gonna add your milk and then stir it together, okay? And as you're stirring it together, you're gonna to say to yourself, this dough's not coming together it's gonna clump up together, okay? But that's perfect, that's right where we want it, okay? So after your dough clumps up together, then just use your hands to press the dough together just to make sure it's one uniform piece. Take you some flour and lightly flour your surface, and then you're gonna knead the dough maybe two to five times just depending on how your dough is acting on that particular day. All right, you're not trying to roll this out like a biscuit, but you're just trying to make sure that all of the dough is together as one. Then you're gonna go ahead on and roll this dough out with your rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, you can use a wine bottle. If you don't have a wine bottle, invest in a rolling pin and that problem will never happen again, all right? So roll the dough out. You wanna roll it out about one eighth of an inch thick, then get you a biscuit cutter and use the biggest one you have, okay? And then just cut out a bunch of pieces because this is going to be our pie crust okay and then make sure you don't leave any scraps behind as you roll it out roll out the dough a little bit flatter and then cut it with your biscuit cutter all right you should literally be left with just a few scraps of pie crust all right then i like to do this thing where i flatten out the dough um i kind of get my ghost on you know i was watching um, ghost with Pastor Squeezy in the Potter scene just makes me think about this. This just helps to give us a nice little base. All right, think like creating a little saucer or a UFO disc so that you have a nice base to put your apples in, okay? So get your little spoon and then you're gonna put your filling right into the middle. All right, then I like to do this little pull and tuck thing, all right? I imagine this is what they do when they do in the tummy tuck. I'm not sure, but it's kind of like a pull and tuck over, all right? The dough should be pliable enough for you to do that. Then you want to press out any excess air to make sure that the filling in the dough is flush as one. Then dip your fork into the flour and then crimp your edges, all right? That's what you have to do to make these doughs. You can make them a little bit bigger by using a small bowl and then cutting around it but why would you want to do that, right? You want to follow this recipe the first time around, okay? It may take you a little bit with the first couple of doughs to get the, the right technique and the right motion with it, 
but you'll eventually get it. So don't worry if some of your pies are a little bit prettier than the other. Everybody's going to the dance with a date. Then heat up some oil to 350 degrees, and then you're gonna fry your pies for about 45 seconds to one minute, all right, on both sides. So the secret is once I see that little golden brown edge around the outside of my pie crust, that's my indicator to me to flip my pies over, all right? So be cautious, you can use a fork, you can use a spatula, you can use some tongs, use whatever you feel safe, safest with flipping over these hand pies into the other side, all right? I like to do a maximum of four at a time, just so I don't reduce my heat too, many, uh, too much while I'm frying my pies. Fry up the rest of your pies, then add them to the platter as they cool off, okay? You can do these in batches. You can keep the pre-cooked uh, pre pies in a preheated oven to 200 degrees to keep them nice and warm while you fry up the rest of your batches, okay? So clearly I'm trying to figure out how to make this look good for, for a photo op, all right? Then after you finish frying all your pies, then you wanna drizzle it with sweetened condensed milk. You can use coconut condensed milk if you want to, but the secret is to use a fork so you can get these nice little ripple lines over your pie crust, okay? You can dip it in the sweetened condensed milk. You can dust it with powdered sugar. You can do whatever you like, but I think sweetened condensed milk just adds that nice little touch to it. McDonald's apple pies is getting a run for his money with this recipe. You can find a recipe at kennetemple.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, notify, do all that fun stuff you're supposed to do so you don't miss the delicious recipe. Peace, love, and deliciousness.